All right, welcome back to another tutorial in Maya. Okay, today, check it out. What I'm going to show you is sort of a, a digital elevation model and a little bit more about terrain. And as you can see here, I have a terrain model going on. And this is derived from some digital elevation model sort of files that I downloaded from the internet. Okay, so no big deal. Um, essentially, this is a what's called a height map. And what it does is it creates terrain. And it creates terrain based on elevation and based on um, a sort of the values between white and dark. And in this case, a digital elevation model of the area that, that I live in kind of looks like this. Okay, so I kind of wanted to just download, um, you know, some information or a, a digital elevation model of something that I was kind of familiar with. Now, technically, this looks like this. Um, if I check this out, this is the area that I live in kind of down here. And this is the what's called a height map or the digital elevation model. And, you know, there's various sources online to download um, DEM uh, models or data. And that's another tutorial for another day. I just sort of wanted to show you what one looks like um, because they're, they don't have any shading from right to left. And it's just sort of like a topographical map that uses the white values for the highest point in the elevation. And then your, your black down here would be the lowest points. Okay, so no big deal there. Um, essentially, it's, it's a, um, uh, a displacement map. And we can use these in Maya by attaching this information to a plane and sort of, you know, creating a, a model that is a real world representation of, um, you know, the elevations that we kind of know. So this is my normal route to work, okay, right through here. And um, <laughs> I just sort of wanted to test this theory out. And I, I sort of created this tutorial because a really cool happening has happened. And that's over here at, at Rhino 3D. OK, so if you go to Rhino 3D, they this is normally a NURBS modeling program that was set up for Windows and they're going to be doing an OS 10 version. So if you're a Mac guy, this is going to be great um, because Rhino is a um, sort of scale specific modeling program. So if you need to manufacture a part in, in real world increments, um, this would be a good program to use. A very powerful program, and um, a lot of this Rhino, um, the Rhino 3D is used for CNC modeling, um, you know, and a lot of stuff in manufacturing. So, really, you can get really tight tolerances with using um, Rhino. So, anyway, go over here and check it out. They have a version for 10.68 and um, they're working on a beta. So, right now, you can download this for free. And you can try out Rhino and you can kind of get to know a little bit more about this program because really this is a great program. Um, really good people over here at Rhino. And, um, you know, you'll have to set up a little account, um, you know, with a password and give them an email. But you can download this beta version, which is really cool. And I'm going to show you sort of how to use at least what I found useful right off the bat from Rhino is creating some um, digital elevation maps and some real world terrain without going through a ton of gyrations um, with using a, a displacement map in, in Maya. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So let's get started. I think what I'll do, I'm going to show you what the render view looks like. Here's a render with the physical sun and sky. Uh, I have a set to 1280 by 720 high quality and mental ray, like production quality. So no big deal there. But let's go into um, Rhino. I think what I'll do is I'll just open up Rhino. Here it is down here in my dock. I'm going to open it up. And right away, you'll get four, version, four views, just like you'd see in Maya. If I click in my perspective view over here, you'll see where you know it activates the perspective view. If I right mouse click, and come down into viewport layout, um, I can maximize this view, okay? Now, 
because this is a beta, there's a lot of wonky stuff happening here. <laughs> okay. Some stuff may or may not work. I don't know. But all we're doing right here with, with Rhino at the moment is we're going to use a little tool over here called the um, surface from three or four corner points. I'm going to click on that with my left mouse button and I'm going to come down here to height field from image. And as you can see, I have it highlighted there. I'm going to go ahead and, and choose that. And then it's going to give me a navigation to where I want to go. In this case, I think I'm looking for Laguna, uh, Laguna right here. And I'm just going to use that um, height scale or that height map that I showed you earlier. So I'll, I'll go ahead and open that up. And right away, I'll get a corner, I'll get a thing up here. Don't be concerned about that for the moment. Just sort of click on one point, hold, and then move that out. And there it is, and click again. And that'll set the height field. And in this case, I have 100 by 100, which is OK to start with. Overall, my scale for my, my project here, or this, this, um, you know, this, this project, is set in millimeters so i could change that up before i i start working on anything to something more reasonable like maybe inches or meters in this case it should be meters but i'll just go ahead and stay with millimeters for the moment and i'll leave that at five um, and you'll see that this will vary the height depending on what size you set this at so i'll just go ahead and hit okay and boom right away um, I see, a, you know, I see the terrain. So if I right mouse click, I can kind of move around in this object. I'm going to go ahead and select this object, right mouse click. Well, let's see, my navigation isn't working so well. Um, and that's a, a little wonky with this program at the moment. Um, you know, I can't seem to navigate, can't seem to navigate around my object here. So anyway, let's just say that that's what I want. I'll go ahead and select this overall and I can come down and and do some renders on it. I can look at what it looks like shaded and there's what it looks like shaded or whatever. But really all I'm concerned with right now is taking this model or this mesh and exporting it. So I can go to file and I can go to export and I can export this as say, you know, Laguna, whatever. Um, I'm going to go to the desktop. I'll, I'll put this Laguna 1. I'll go to the desktop. And you can save it as a couple of different, you know, well, all sorts of different, um, you know, save options here. You can use 3DS if you have, you know, Maya 20, I think it's 2011 and above or, you know, something like that. Or you could just do a standard OBJ or an FBX. Okay. So in this case, I'll, I'll just save it as an OBJ or, you know, eh, let's, yeah, I'll save it as an OBJ because that's, that's a little more standard for most everyone. And I'll go ahead and hit export. And it's going to give me some options up here. For the most part, the default values are going to work fine. So I'll just go ahead and hit export. And I may want to set my mesh options up to the, the highest value right there. And I'll hit OK. And I'll go ahead and hide Rhino. And let's see, let me hide Maya here for a second. And that OBJ file should be around here somewhere. Here it is right here. So it's Laguna 1 OBJ. And um, yeah, that's about it. So let's go into um, Maya for a second. Let me get Maya up here. And I think what I'll do is just take this one and delete it. And uh, we'll navigate over here, get into our grid. And I'll go ahead and just create a grid or create a plane. So we'll create a plane. There it is. And actually, we don't even need to create a plane because I created an OBJ. So in this case, I might want to just go to File, Import, and we'll go to that Laguna. I think it was down here somewhere. Laguna boop, 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 OBJ. And I may have to switch up my import options here to the OBJ option. So now I can select that OBJ, hit open, and there it is. 
Okay, well, right away you can see something is kind of weird because it's not on the plane like it should be. But if we go back into, say, Rhino, you'll notice that because this z-axis is sort of up and down for its orientation. So Rhino is working with a different, it's what's called the z-axis. And, and they use, use that in, in CNC and some other you know, types of applications um, for data. So anyway, we really want our y to be up and down. So anyway, that's why that does that. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and hide Rhino. And we'll take this and we'll see what, what we need to do. I'm going to come over here and choose our um, channel box and sort of just rotate this. And you can see where it's rotating on the Z axis, X axis. Okay. And we want to set that X to something like negative 90. I'll go into negative 90. Boom. And there it is. Okay. So, um, yeah, pretty cool. Um, if I want to uh, sort of get a better idea of what's going on with the surface here, um, I could just assign it the same in Maya, in my hypershade. If I come over here into the hypershade, I could create a, a surface, say the surface Lambert. And on that Lambert, I could attach a color file that is the exact same. I'll go to a 2D file and I'll navigate to that, um, that Laguna file. And I think I, I put it in this folder as well. Um, yeah, it's the grayscale PNG and I'll attach that. Okay. So now I can attach this, um, this, um, Lambert, I think it's Lambert four. I'll click on there and we'll sign it the existing material of the Lambert four. And now I can kind of see what that digital elevation information says. Okay. Might want to turn off my uh, wireframe and there it is. Okay. So in a couple of easy motions, I created a digital terrain that's pretty much realistic to, you know, pretty, yeah, it's organically correct. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, so now I can go on to start texturing and doing all sorts of modeling and, and other things that might I might want to do with this terrain. And um, yeah, that's, pr that's pretty cool. Okay, so um, yeah, um, there's a lot more to digital elevation modeling than um, sort of what I'm showing you here. But that is sort of a quick, th th this is really quick to do. Um, and especially concerning, you know, making a displacement map and doing this within Maya. And I have no idea of why Maya does not, you know, have, you know, sort of a function that deals with, um, you know, a height map um, as efficiently as some other applications. So anyway, maybe Maya 2016 <laughs> will we'll get this feature. Okay. So anyway, I just thought I'd point that out to you real quick and um, have a good weekend. Haven't been around for a while doing tutorials. I'm working on a website with lots more training and some really cool stuff. So that's been taking some time and I know everybody's waiting on it. So anyway, um, I'm working on that for you. Okay. So there you go. Just thought I'd teach you something for the weekend. You can have fun with that. Go over to Rhino and, um, you know, pick up that Rhino uh get that Rhino demo uh, because this is good in perpetuity and it's for 10.68 or lower. So, um, or actually 10.68 or higher and it's not supported. Okay. So there's a few bugs in there and you can be a beta tester and you can send them your, your opinions and stuff. Really good people over at Rhino. Okay. So thanks Rhino. And uh, as always, you guys go over and read a book. All right, and be a good person and um, come back and watch all these tutorials. All right, so great. Thanks for watching. See you for the next one.